what's up guys welcome back to the channel thank you so much for choosing to watch this video let me tell you guys <laughs> me and my guest here we just did an amazing video and then that video disappeared like <laughs> we don't know what happened to it but you know what we're not giving up it's almost midnight i told my guest and i said we are not giving up we're still gonna give do another video because it's it's meant to be <laughs> we are supposed to do a video so welcome to the channel welcome to betty az thank you yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. welcome to the channel and uh so this is very easy home here we keep it real uh as you can see the way i am i'm not even like prepared my people here they know here we don't we don't uh we just keep it the way it is yeah mm -hmm. so welcome to the channel welcome to arizona i should say thank you so much and yeah thank you for having me here you're looking good and it's almost midnight. You don't look oh like you're God. almost in bed. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> she was so prepared because we were doing a video. And then that video, it just, I wish, I, I don't know what happened. But anyway, we are here. <laughs> we are here and that is gone. Take two. And here we are. This is take two. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. this is not my check. So... For those who don't know my guest, she's going to introduce herself. Uh, I've known her for a while. Let me tell you, I've been talking to this guest for um, almost, I can say, like two years now. Mm -hmm. We've been talking for two years on the phone, never met. today, uh, And uh, we've now met physically for the first time. But we always feel like we know each other. We've known each other. So introduce yourself, tell us where you, who you are and where you come from and originally where you come from also and here in the States and to Endeavor. All right. Um, for names, I go by Essie Kago. That is the name I use across all my social media platforms. And uh, I am a mother, uh, for those who might not know and i'm also betty's friend and a sister to mary and an auntie and like if you want and originally i come from kenya all the way from karatina to united states of america and specifically i live in kansas and i'm here in arizona i came to do some project and i was like you know what i've been talking with betty for more than two years and i have never met her even though like we we talk a lot so we know each other more than just uh the only thing yeah. that was remaining is to meet her and for sure it happened yeah mm -hmm. and you know it's um uh, it's funny how you can you can make friends talk on the phone there are so many people, like, I honestly talk to, they are even in different countries. You talk to them, you feel like you've known them all this time, but you've never even met. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good how internet connects us and social media connects us. Mm -hmm. All the way from Karatina. All the way from Karatina to United States of America. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so, how has your experience been here in America? How long have you been here? I landed in America back in 2014, that was in Missouri, uh, St. Louis, then I moved to Kansas after six years and now I've been in Kansas for four years, making it a total of 10 good years in America. Wow, so we came to the US almost the same time. Yes, and it's been a good experience than whatever I had back there in Kenya. Yeah? Yeah. I thought you said you are anti anti Maju so back home were you anti Mado? <laughs> oh my god, I don't even think they they really I think back home the only things that I can recall or the most memorable events that run through my mind whenever I remember about Kenya or home is how much I struggled over there yeah. to even make 
adds meat as opposed to here in America where everybody has a, they have a privilege. Yeah. In there are so many opportunities out here that we can go pursue and become. As long as you have a goal and you are not lazy in America, it is very yeah. hard to suffer in America, especially yeah. financially. Yeah, there are yeah. so many there are so many jobs out there. So even if you want to go work in McDonald's right now, they are paying like twenty two dollars an hour. Wow. So yeah, I mean, as you say, as long as you're not lazy. Mm -hmm. So how how did you get here? Like how did you come to the US? My story to coming to America began uh, back in twenty twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. That is when I played a green card even without knowing what it was to be honest with you i only participated uh in the lottery because someone told me about the lottery they had told oh, me yeah. about four good years i come from nyeri and when i say nyeri i mean like a back back there in the village where they don't know they didn't know nothing about green card thank god today there are youtubes and there are people like berry and i see wakago who can come here and tell you about green cards before right. then people used to hold the information about america and nobody knew nothing about america right. other than the people who lived here yes. from africa mm -hmm. so we used to think about things that don't, doesn't even exist yeah personally after completing high school i went to nairobi um to look for greener pastures where I was hired as a house help, of course, in like four different homes. Wow, you worked as a house help? Yeah, I have. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Guys, huh? you know what? If you have a house help, you better treat her right because you never know. She might win a green card. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. so uh -huh. my first job in Nairobi was a house help and I was hired in South Bay. Back then, South B was a big city. Yeah. It was a city that was known for people who are well up. Mm. So I didn't care how much they would pay me as long as they can retain me in that estate. It was yeah. a very nice estate back then. Yeah. I haven't been there uh, lately. I don't know how it looks like today mm -hmm. because they have many other places that are looking better. But I really, really thanked God getting that job as a house help not because of the salary they would pay me but because of the environment yes comparing with where i had come from yeah because oh, i had come from, from the country. village like a village and right. i mean a village mm -hmm. so that was my first job uh in south b and i was i think i was getting paid like uh 1800 kenya shillings 1800 a month yes that's like ten dollars. Yeah, and to me, because I hadn't had more than ten shillings of yeah. my own. But that is back like ten years ago. That really right. was a not ten years ago. It's a it's it's more than ten years ago. Oh yeah, because I've been here ten years ago. Oh right? yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I've been here for oh. a period of ten years. Yeah. So after. South B, I got hired to like three or four other places as a house girl. And I won't lie to you. The reason as to why I was fired from the South B job. <laughs> so you were even fired from the house girl job? I was kicked out. Oh, like, you lost your 1,800 <laughs> shillings. I was kicked out and I couldn't imagine myself going back to the village. Me. Why did you back eat baby's food or what did you do? I did there not. There must have been something you did. <laughs> I was wrong. In fact, the, 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 the mystic was not from the boss. It oh, was yeah? me. And I accept and I take responsibility of the, the mistakes that I do. Yeah. So this is what I did. Me with the niece who used to stay there, the boss's niece, mm -hmm. We uh, decided to sell their old magazine. Right. To yeah. A bypasser who was exchanging with, you know, Mali Mali. Yeah. So we decided yeah. since in the future we want to be independent, 
it, the earlier the better, we, we should now start uh, buying these uh, household items. Right. How? We don't have money, but we have these magazines and nobody uses them. In fact, we use them to light up the, the um, charcoal jiko. Mm. Hey, and we did exchange them. But the following Sunday, I was very busy in church. Worshipping God, oh how good he is, oh shuka shuka. And then the next minute I'm hearing someone patting me. And then I'm like, eh? <laughs> Did I call the Holy Spirit and then he decided to just come in person? Yeah. So looking back, I saw it was uh Priscilla who was the niece mm. of the to the family. And she was like, You are needed home. That statement told me something is really bad. And yeah. that is how I was fired when I was very busy worshipping God. And my <laughs> journey started there, moving from one house to yeah. the other. Because this first house, I had the best bosses. They would buy us clothes. Right. They would let us eat everything. That was the first house I was able to eat some sausages. Wow. Like, they wouldn't even care how many And you know ate. some people, they would be stingy with those like sausages, they will say they not give, well, I know not everyone, but some people can be really stingy with their, yeah. their house help. Yeah. yeah. So that was the only house we had freedom, but we abused the freedom. And me and the niece, hmm. we were kicked out. And I was paid my $1,800 uh, shillings, Kenya shillings. Yeah. And uh, that is how I bought my first phone. Motorola C one fifteen. Oh way. <laughs> Motorola. The big so, one with the aerial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can you cannot imagine that I bought that phone for fifteen hundred, only being left with three hundred shillings. Wow. And I don't have anywhere to go, and I cannot go back in the village. Mm -hmm. That was the last thing I would want to do. We went and um, we were hosted by. Priscilla's boyfriend and they were not actually a boyfriend and a girlfriend as per se but now we had to make him like the acting boyfriend by fire by force because yeah. we need someone to sleep in anyway right. mm -hmm. and we cannot sleep on the street so we ended up in Gitorai 44 and my journey to being a house girl I, I, I don't know if I was a house girl or if I was a contractor house girl because I never stayed in one home for more than three months. Why? Yes, because I I was I was hard headed, I, I think, or maybe I, I like justice. And if I stay with you and you are mistreating me or I see some inhuman acts, you move on. I'm gonna leave you and I'm like, you know what, you are paying me one thousand eight hundred. Put it there and it's it gonna work for you, I'm out. So, <laughs> I went to the second job. That lady was very mean because she would count the chapati dough. When you cut the chapati dough, yeah. she would come and count to see how many chapos oh. you are cooking so that you don't get to eat when you are cooking. And I was like, you are a young mother. She, she had just given birth, so she was post pattern yeah and there is a lot of work that you do in a mm. house that has a new baby right and she also had another baby and i was like all this work and you think if i eat one chapati when i'm cooking it's gonna make me grow bigger because by then i was very slim mm -hmm. and i was like you know what hmm. let your chapati work for you and you <laughs> and i left mm -hmm. When I left, I would, we, we had this, uh, my friend. And of course, maybe uh, there were other experiences, not just chapati. You know, somebody no. might think, oh, you quit because of chapati. Yes, I would do that. I'm mm -hmm. that petty. Mm -hmm. I am that petty. <laughs> because oh, really? if you think your chapati is bigger than me, yeah. then keep your chapati. What I mean is, uh, if you see someone mean with even the, like, the chapati issue, they are also other issues too you know yeah i was like mm. you mean one chapati is a concern mm -hmm. and how about 1800 shillings where are you are you even gonna pay me mm. like i left and i had this friend's house where we would where, whenever we would, we would quit job or get fired we would go back there and it was a single room mm -hmm. thank god that 
person is now very much blessed. They have their own home and everything. But she used to host us whereby we would lift the table, put it on the couch so that we can sleep on the floor. And her and the husband were just on the other side of the curtain. Oh. So she was just hosting us because of love, not because she had enough to mm. share with us. Mm. And thank God that she's now a real life person. So from there, I got uh, another job in Juja and I was hired by a thief. I didn't know she was a thief up until I saw some, what we call them, FBI in Kenya, the, 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 the secret unit, whatever. That the is criminal right. investigating, blah, 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 blah. Mm. So that is how I got to know I was hired by a thief. And uh, as soon as she was released from the cell, mm. I left. In fact, that lady made me to be very careful and look around and try to learn my bosses because you might get yourself in a very, very uh, dangerous zone without knowing. The last job that I worked as a house girl was in Juja. Again, I was hired by this couple who used to have a very big uh, shop in J. Mm -hmm. They had money, but they were also, I don't know if they, if they were trying to budget or they just meant to be who they are. Mm. But in that house, a quarter of a meat was being, we would buy a whole kg of meat because they are trying to cover the shame from the butcher man. Mm. And then we would get home and beat it. No, 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 you cannot cook all this because it has to be quarter, quarter, quarter. So we would cook it four times. Mm -hmm. And we were like a family of eight because of other, um, I had other people who worked there. Mm. So I did not quit because of the meat. I did not quit because of the eggs that were restricted. Uh, you could only eat an egg on Sunday. And that was fine because even at home, I didn't used to, to eat eggs every mm. day. But the thing is, this woman kind of took advantage of my services. Like, it was 2000 She was paying me 2000 or 1800 mm -hmm. And she would make her daughter sleep on uh, the, the, the blankets, mm -hmm. the, the heavy blankets, the mm -hmm. old heavy blankets. Yeah. Every single day, and she was she she used to pee in bed, mm. and they were well up. They could have afforded diapers if they wanted, mm. but then in the morning, the entire bed will be undone, and I'm gonna wash them with my hands every single morning, together oh. with their clothes, and I'm also supposed to prepare the 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 girl to go to school. So I was overwhelmed by the work, and here is the story that made me to quit. They decided to renovate their house and then uh, they were like, um, we're going to move to the rentals. They used to have rentals in the compound mm. and those rentals were being rented or leased to the j -Quart students. Mm. So we, we moved there. They were upstairs. They were like um, townhomes. We moved there, not quite townhomes, but they were, they were, what do we call them? The Gorofa type of. Yeah. You know, um, apartments. They were apartments. So, the ma ma main house was supposed to be renovated and they called the engineer and staff and everything. My you, the water pump wouldn't pump water all the way to the second floor or that floor where we were living because the rest of the rentals were rented out. So, me, I was the one to go down get water, get water <laughs> For everybody, if they want to use the bathroom, it was me to go do that. And you know how much water the yeah. toilet can use. Right. Yeah, so I did it for like a whole week and I was like, um, I think this is even worse than being in the village. And I started calling my friends and asking them, do you know anywhere I can work? And I'm so tired of working as a house girl. And by luck, I got a girl called Eva and she was working somewhere at a restaurant, restaurant, Kibadastic, Kibadastic uh, mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. And she told me, I'm quitting the job where I'm working and you can come and have it. Mm -hmm. They are looking for someone. You know what? And I told, I informed my boss. I was like, oh, Mama Flan, um, I'm going to be quitting work by the end of the month because I just want to change what I'm doing and get independent. Mm -hmm. And that is where... I got to understand that people will appreciate 
you if only they are benefiting from you. Yeah. When the benefits no longer continues, then they discontinue the respect they had for you mm -hmm. and the need they had for you and the the love they had for you. So I remember that woman uh, called me every single name that has ever existed. And she was a women Aww. women guild uh, member. She would call me every single name. I don't know what, I don't know what. I'm not going to pay you. And that is how I ended up taking her to police for the first oh. time. I, I appeared at a mm -hmm. police station was to demand my money as a husband. Mm -hmm. So she was summoned and the husband came and you know men don't like kills. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the husband was like just pay her so that we get out of this. And that is how I was paid. Got into a matatu, a bus. And I left to the job, the restaurant job where I worked. And I worked as a um, I was a cook and I was also like, um, what do you call these people who serve people? The server. No. Waiter. Mean, waiter. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you would cook in the morning, then around noon you oh. become a waiter. You go shower yeah, and then change and become smart and then you go serve people. Right. These are people who used to work uh, at UN. So they were big people. Mm. And from there, I think I have done so many other things, like becoming... Is that where you learned about the green card? No. I was very young. Remember, I went to Nairobi as soon as I completed high school. So, oh, so I was like still 20, 18. 18, Yeah, wow, that is when I became young. independent. And I think becoming independent at a young age, it also helps you to remain like... You remain strong no matter what because you are used to being or to supporting yourself and you know no other life. Like for now, the years I have lived being independent all on myself on my own, it is the same it is like half of I mean, my age is half independent. Right. And then the rest was when I was in my parents' house. Mm. So I only came to know about the green card when I moved to Dandora, phase 4. That is after having so many other jobs that I did. I have been a hawker. I have been... Um, what were you hawking? <laughs> I was hawking men's shirts. I was hawking girl stops. I was hawking anything that... Could when you say hawking, do you mean like going to... Or like having some a space to sell or like tr just going around and selling... Cause I have, uh, I know people. Some people they just go around town and they, they, they um, well, some people they have a kibanda, and other people they just go around and selling. Yeah, I have done both. I mm. didn't have a kibanda as per se, but I know. You see, when Gedurai uh, fortified, when the highway was being built, mm. before then people used to have uh, some spaces uh, on the on the ground yeah. where you would come and put um something and just put your merchandise there huh? so i and have you see when that. i when she's talking about all these things i'm thinking oh my goodness oh. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah and you would go home with like a layer of dust oh yeah and that didn't worry me because i was just trying to see what would work in life and in life you have to try something you are yeah and yeah. i have also gone around hawking like you mm. go to a plot and knock and then they open the little gate and then you go in and you're like I'm selling uh, kids clothes like this and you yeah. have kids clothes and you have men shirts and you have bed sheets I used to carry everything so that when you ask me something you I have produce it. it like I have it you don't have any reason to say you did not have something that I wanted but it's good because you know what a lot of girls nowadays are um, they are not they are not looking into all that kind of hassle some people they look down on uh, at some jobs they will say oh me is a house girl i cannot be this i cannot be this i hope i cannot do this they want easy money they want to go to these wababas for the wababas to give them the money they want to they want to gain so much they want to drive range rovers 
I'm sure you've seen that. You know, yeah. young girls, they want to drive and they want to do, they want to start life from up there. You see, like Essie, she started life from scratch. She didn't know she, one day she would be here. And I always say, from my experience, I believe it is good to believe in yourself and to fight and to fight for yourself because you never know. You didn't know at that point, you know. I didn't know. I didn't you, know. You didn't know from a layer of from a layer of dust foundation, you would be stepping in in uh, Sephora or yeah. Mac yeah. buying the, any kind of make. You didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know, and I didn't actually. I I never thought I would be in America one day. You're right. And this is what I say: if you still have choices to make on what job you're gonna take and not and, and turn down mm. you're still well up right we were doing whatever we could do because we didn't have choices to make we knew that the Range Rovers are for people who have earned that life yeah so we only did what we could and according to our level mm. hoping for a better tomorrow of course everybody who is living should have a hope for tomorrow a better tomorrow so Coming to know about green card, I got to know about green card. I'm just rushing. Mm, I yeah. came to know about green card when I moved to Dunbar. Right. <coughs> mm. And mm. I met a friend mm. who knew about green cards. Right. She was from Kiambu. Me, I'm from Nyeri. We, we didn't know much back then. Mm. So telling me about green card, I'm like, what is this? A card of green? Or, or what is it? Mm. So she kept on telling me, you are very young. I would want you to go to... Uh, Maju, and I'm like, Maju, and I have the village thing in me, mm. and she's from Kiambu, born, born in Dandora, she's Eastern, she has lived in Eastern, and she knows so much, and I'm like, I used to look at her and would see a computer, uh, just a running computer, because she would know if, if anything, and right. I'm like, okay, what is green card, and how do I um, play it, she's like, you just go to a computer and then you fill out your information and they might choose you. And I'm like, and what are you doing here? You, sh you should be there. If there right. is something called Green Card that can take you over mm. to America, then why, what are you doing here in, mm. in Dadora? And she'd be like, mm, I feel like you still have um, a lot of life and it can favor you more. So it took me three or four years. Mm -hmm. That is 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11. It took me five years you to buy that idea. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Mm. So one day I was washing my clothes and I was so tired. I had tried everything. By then I had like, uh, I only had the one child. By the time I had already even gotten a child. Mm -hmm. And life wasn't changing for better. I really, really admired to have a good life. Right. And I really, really worked hard to get that good life. But I never got it when I was there. I never got a chance to enjoy life in Kenya. To be honest, the first toilet mm. that I used, I said toilet, I did not say latrine. Mm. I used it in my apartment, my first apartment in, in America. The first oh. toilet that I owned. I knew people <laughs> had those. And I had seen them. Oh, before. you used to share shared bathrooms. Shared yeah. bathrooms where you have a, an entire apartment plot. Mm -hmm. and then plot. It has people on this side and on this side. This and then the hallway. Yes. And then the bathrooms are the corner. Oh, I remember those ones. Yeah. I saw the, 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 you know what? The first time I saw those, I had visited um auntie of mine. Um, but, you know, she passed on a long time ago. May she rest in peace. I had visited her in Makongeni somewhere. That's the first time to see those kind of, yeah, those kind of uh, plots. Yeah. The ones you have yeah. home face me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, before then, let me take you a little bit back. When I went to work at the restaurant, uh, when I got the job and I quit doing a house girl anymore, I was tired. I, 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 something was just telling me, house girl is not your thing. I went to this restaurant to job. And then I would live in Banana, uh, Mushada. And we used to live in ghetto, in a ghetto, whereby the house is made of Mabati. And the, 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 the outside, uh, the environment outside was just bare, bare dirt. And when... When it rains, hmm, it used to be like a, 
you you know the old cow sheds mm. it used to be like wow. that and the bathroom where we would shower mm. the floor wasn't even cemented the, remember this a 600 house mm. 600 shillings house so we you would go to the toilet the latrine and you would just peep like this and go back you would only use a bathroom at the village market you you better pay a trip to village market to just go use a bathroom because you cannot even tolerate what was in that a plot but it was a nice it was a, an affordable house for us mm. so now let me go back to the Nora and someone tells me about green card and uh, eventually I'm washing clothes life is so hard I see people with nice nice clothes good shoe and I'm like how will I even get there like people are living mm. their life and I'm here struggling and how can I make this life better will my child grow up and find me struggling like this mm. how will I even raise a child how will I even set them to school and still manage to keep them in school and stuff like those and I was washing my clothes and some voice just told me go play that green card mm. And that is when I went that same day. I did not continue washing my clothes. I just covered them with another uh, basin and I called the lady. I was like, hey, can you uh, direct me where I can go and play green card? And she was like, who is this? Because by then it was five years later. Oh. She had moved and my, mm. I think I had lost my phone or it was stolen. Of course, I was living in Zadora. Mm. What do you expect? So I was like, this is um, Essie, uh, I'm just trying to see if you can direct me to the guy you told me that he can help me to play green card. And I went the same day. Mm. She sent me the information and I went to town, Nairobi town, the same day. Mm. I went there and met the guy and he was like, okay, uh, I don't know, you are just lucky because the green cards are ongoing. And I'm like, okay, what do I need? And he, he was like, did you bring some passport photos? I'm like, for what? Because I do not even know what green card mm. is. And I had never ever prayed God to take me to America. Remember, God just decided to bring me to America. I never dreamt about me being in America because even being in Mobasa, I had never been to Mobasa. So you played one time the lottery mm -hmm. and you won. Yeah, that was first time not knowing what green card is or how to go about it. And comes May, I was selected. Wow. Yeah. And the news got me when I was very pregnant with my second born. Oh. So um, I could only imagine me being in America now, raising my kids in America, something I never, ever, ever thought. And that is how I got to come to America. Wow. God is good, you know? Like, yeah, um, he is. That's why, that's why, you know, I always say, people, people listen to a lot of... Um, advice and a lot of you know people get a lot of information and they get they hear things some of them become very discouraged and they don't try because some people they hear oh it's hard to win green card and they keep it in their head they don't even want to try because they know it's hard it's like going to the embassy some people they already conclude you cannot get a visa so they don't want to go to the embassy because they know the, some people they think oh my god green card who really wins green card? I cannot apply. So you see, it's a good thing you did. Yeah. All those five years, they were not maybe for you, meant for you. Maybe. That was the time. Do you know you are lucky? Because a lot of people don't win green card like that. Especially yeah. like first trial like that. I know, I know. And I thank God for such an opportunity. Did you and have I the money? Do not take it for granted. Money. To money. come or Me. you and money. borrowing. Me and money on the same statement. <laughs> Somebody that <laughs> no way. <laughs> so it was a very huge struggle to be able to ferry a whole family. Oh yeah, because now you are like four of you. Yeah, right? we were four, and back then it was even more better. But then we also struggled because we had to sell everything that we had. I almost, I almost, like missed to come to America because of France. Oh. But God, this is what I say, God cannot open a door without knowing how he's going to take you through that door. Mm. And when people call me and tell me, oh, I cannot play green card because we are not wealthy and green card takes a lot of money, I'm like, 
Do you think God is a confused God? He will never let you win without having, without providing for the expenses of the green card. Mm. Whether you're gonna use a loan or anything, mm. but yeah. you're still gonna come to America. The, yeah. How I came to America and all the funds, because it was like a 500K wow. yeah. uh, project. Mm. And now, mind you, I had never gathered 10,000 yeah. by myself. So talking of 500,000, that was a lot of faith, a lot of frustration, a lot of um, you did a harambe or something? I did two. I did two harambe. One was uh, at the village where after they had contributed enough, I got like 60,000. Mm -hmm. And the Nairobi one was a uh, hundred thousand. It was 90 something thousand. It wasn't even a hundred. Mm. That couldn't even be half of what we were looking for. But um. God, God provides. And if God means that you will ever, ever land in America, trust me, you, whether oh, yeah. you don't have a penny or you do, yeah. you will come to America. That's what day. I say. People should knock doors, knock doors, where, yeah. like, do whatever it takes to get. Don't blow that chance. And have faith. Mm, and have faith and believe yeah. in God. That Because you know what? The moment you open your mouth to speak, to you never know who you are asking. And, you, and God will bless you through that. You don't know. God will bless you through that person. Yes. Mm. And talking of coming to America, I didn't even know anyone to host me. And you know you have to have a host to be. Oh, you didn't have a host? I didn't have a host. I didn't know anyone. How, how, how would I know so anyone? So you came blindly like that? Blindly, but I was connected by a friend of a friend to a friend. So I was like the fourth person from the one who's going to host wow. us. Wow. And I was so worried because I didn't know how this person gonna treat us. And you have a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a whole family with my kids. And I I don't know, but it, I was very anxious. I know the Bible says we shouldn't be anxious, but I was. Because I'm a, I'm a human being. Mm. Thank God, our host was a very good host. And she hosted us for six months and two weeks. By the time we were leaving her house, we had everything we needed. And wow. that is how I settled in my Wow, life. hosted you? Four people yeah. in the same Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For six months and two weeks. That's good. Yeah. And you know, it's good to say that you said your host was good. A yeah. lot of people, they don't have that. They want to. Um, and I understand some hosts are different. I don't, you know, blame anybody for having the experience. But I always say, find that one uh, one thing that you would always keep in mind because even for someone to just welcome you in their home yeah. uh, Even if they turn out to be mean, but just always remember that they opened that door There are so many people that they get let down by their hosts yeah. even before taking that flight mm -hmm. uh, We hear stories. I always say you know what even if your host was not did not meet your expectation or they changed as soon as you landed mm -hmm. Just appreciate the fact that they said yes, you like they open the door for day one. Now, you when you stay here for even a week, you, you get to understand oh, there are motels, there are these. At least they open that door for that first day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is very important. It's very important. On yeah? that note, let me tell you, I had the first host. Mm -hmm. Let me call her a host. Mm -hmm. When I won Green Card, I didn't know nobody in America. So the guy who I used his cyber to play green card, he was like, I know this girl, she just left to US a few mm. months ago. Mm. And I can call her and ask her for the, the, the address and stuff. Because back then it was just the address mm. and the names and whatever. So the girl was being hosted by the brother, her brother. Mm. She was kind enough. I came to figure this out later, mm. but before then I was like, what type of a person is this? How would you volunteer to invite people and then you no longer even respond to them? You mm. don't even pick up their calls and stuff. So this is when we were feeling this, the, the first letter. It is DS-260. Mm. She couldn't, from there she couldn't pick up our calls and she couldn't communicate. Why? Because she was also being hosted. Oh, All wow. she did was to provide the address and then we can close the rest wh when we get there. Mm. And although she did not communicate and we didn't know what is going on and we thought she was a very, um, uh, she was very unkind and stuff, it helped us to first secure or first things first. 
So when we got here, that is when I understood and she actually came, came to me and she told me, you know what? I know I was supposed to host you guys, but I was also being hosted somewhere. All I did was to provide the address, which was very important. Mm. And I was like, yeah, it's okay since we got another host and mm. it is not like you, you are not willing to host us. So I'm saying this to let people know that you might be knowing a person in America, mm. but still they cannot host you. Yeah. They are not in a position to right. host you. So my host was good and she gave us a very good foundation and it, it became easier for us to settle in America because your host can make your life hard or yeah. easier. Yeah. yeah, so you know, because it's a, I know it's a long story and time may, you know, like we don't want to be here for an hour. Yeah. Uh, so right now, I understand you are uh, you, you own your own business. Mm. So from having a, a shop, you know, putting things on the ground, mm. selling in <laughs> with the right, mm. to a business, you know, like having a business in in the US. Mm. So how? I mean, both worlds. If you compare both worlds, do you always say you've really seen God in like, or you can believe? This is happening, or did you just wake up in the US and you you found yourself doing the business, or did you try other jobs as well, like getting employed before getting into this? And how is how is the experience being self-employed so far? Yeah, you don't just move from Africa or wherever, and you go to a new land and you become uh, you become self-employed because to become to to be self-employed you need funds. So I started by being hired. In fact, I started as a housekeeper. Yeah. So housekeeping job, I think it made me to ask myself so many questions. When you are out there, you think that, oh, if I just get that chance and go to America, I can do just anything. Even if they tell me to leave the mountains like this, I'm going to do it. And then you come here. And in America, if you are meant to be at work for eight hours, you're going to be there for eight hours on your toes. Yeah. It was very challenging being on your toes eight hours doing uh, housekeeping, making beds and stuff. And I started with a, a hotel where the beds are this mattress are this size mm -hmm. and you have to tuck it and make it look so, so nice. So it was challenging. And from being a housekeeper, I started doing uh, caregiving jobs. And then comes May, no, August 2020, I said, you know what? I think I am done with this uh, employment thing mm. and I would want to try something else. And back in my mind, I usually, um, I had this job that I had ever been willing to open, but the fear, mm. the fear like, how is it going to be? Yeah. America, you know. Mm, uh. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit being hired today, mm. August 2020, mid-COVID. And I became self-employed from that month of August. And up to date, I thank God because I've been able. I've done other things like Uber and transportation. And they didn't fit me quite well, like when I decided to open my own cleaning company. Wow, yeah. good job. You know, I'm... I'm proud of you. When someone come here and they start their own business, and you know, that tells you, when Essie says that she has a cleaning company, it tells you it's not just in healthcare. You can you can do other things. You can start other businesses too. She owns her own cleaning company. Uh, and a lot of people, they always think, oh, you know, uh, cleaning is bad. Cleaning toilets, you are like, Nikama Wanaona, that money is not... The dollar does not write itself where it comes from, you know. It doesn't write on your forehead where you're getting the dollar from. The, the, here in this country, one thing I appreciate is when you clean someone's ho home, you know, they appreciate and they see you as a... They don't look down on you, no, or do they? No, 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 no. Do they treat you like, oh, our cleaner is here? <laughs> they treat you with respect, you no, know. It is very different in America. Uh, they will never look down on you because of what you do because they know what you're doing you're doing something they are not able to do yeah they so appreciate they that. see you as a very important person as yeah. opposed to you you know we have the African mentality of oh cleaning toilets cleaning yeah oh, cleaning people's homes like mess mm. 
No, I need somewhere I can go sit in, a, in an office and swing my chair from left, right. But ask yourself whenever you are choosing jobs, what is more important? Is it what you are doing or what you are getting? I know, right? Also ask yourself, why am I doing this? So if it is something that is bringing out your purpose, because everybody has a purpose in life, Mm -hmm. then go do it but w what i would want to encourage people is please go for what you think you can do if you think you can be a pilot you can be a pilot yeah if you think you can be a business owner in america you can be a business owner if you think you can be a doctor then you can be a doctor but how are you going to become all these things if you start the journey today yeah. of becoming and yeah. that is what I did I overcame my fear and I was like I'm gonna approach these white people these Americans and I will ask them to give me a job a cleaning job and yes they did they don't even actually they don't they, they don't like despise you yeah and you work with them and they are Everything is just good. Of course, every job has its own challenges, uh, but so far I can say it is the best thing that I did. And you know, the, the, the funny thing is, or not funny, but one of the challenges I know mostly, like, as he struggles with, is like employees. You know, here, a lot of, a lot of companies, they, they have issue with employees. They don't, um, most of these jobs they are hiring, like almost every job. Mm -hmm. So even her, she's hiring. Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah. live in, <laughs> if you live in Kansas, if you live in Kansas and you're starting your, you know, you, you, you want to start the, the, uh, that route of cleaning job, mm -hmm. she, she has, a, you know, she has the opening, she's hiring. Yeah. I am always hiring. And yeah. that is one of the challenges, like getting people to work for you. Yeah. Um, it's very challenging, especially around this time. Since COVID came, I don't know what went wrong, but there has been shortage of people to work. Like, it's been chaotic. And she pays well. So yeah. you want to get good money. Uh, that, that one is a guarantee, but also be a good worker. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, because you know, uh, this as you know, not even some of these jobs in every job you do, give it your best. Yeah. Uh, and also, I always say, I see, it's a good thing to be self employed. I'm telling you, uh, when you look at all these jobs, uh, you know, like it did well, it depends with your the kind of career you have. Uh, some people they are making big bucks in being employed, but uh, if you are if you are in a position where you can become self-employed it's a you know it's it's um it's a good thing i can say that yeah it's a good thing yeah and you get to have your own schedule mm -hmm. especially when you are a single mom yeah it gives you the flexibility you'll be the, looking for right uh you need to drop off your kids to school in the morning and be at work there is no single schedule in america that can fit that if you are employed and yeah, yeah. But if you are self-employed you can manage your time and still be able to hit everything and balance life yeah it's exactly yeah and you know we are not saying being employed is bad it's just that from our own experiences yeah. life has been way much easier you know sometimes i remember there are times we have called each other and we are trying to weigh and what else can we do better you know having that <laughs> one friend especially <laughs> We ask ourselves, do we go back to school? Do we do this? Do we do this? No. We go back. <laughs> you know, when I, when I was doing Uber, I was calling Essie, if I don't make enough money, sometimes it's almost time to go pick up the kids and I have like a hundred dollars. I've just made a hundred dollars and I'm like, Essie, this money, you take out lunch, you take off the gas, you take off and I'm so frustrated. <laughs> And my car is breaking down. I'm telling you, behind the scenes, we go through yeah, a, lot. a lot. You complain. I would call Essie and I would complain for a whole 30 minutes. I, I remember <laughs> you, you, we couldn't even, we didn't even have a way of saying hi. You were like, you just call me. <laughs> I start talking. And you start talking. Life is crazy. You know, we have, let me tell you guys, 
we are not we are not here like we've made it in life it's, yeah. it's still a work in progress <laughs> but i thank god that we always always talk about how we're gonna improve ourselves how yes. we're gonna make us and uh, as we understand each other mm -hmm. because let me tell you let me tell you my <laughs> Some of the people don't really, they'll give you ideas and, ad, and good ideas, but they yeah. don't honestly understand. They're not in your shoe. They're not in your shoe to know. Yeah. Being, and, and you know, being a single mother is not like a disease or anything. It's mm -hmm. not, it's a it's blessing. Not a but it's, we have to, we have to think about the reality. These kids, you have kids going to school, you have kids doing the, you have to take them to activities. You have, some of them, they, the school call you they are sick and all that. Not even just a single parents, parents, you know, this mm -hmm. is all for the parents. Yeah. But we thank God for this far. We thank God. I see, I thank God for you. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for, I know, I wish we have more time. We could have talked and talked because this story, honestly, I know my people, they want to hear mm -hmm. uh, more of the story. Yeah. But because of the time, we're going we're gonna to end it there. Mm -hmm. And there is hope, you know. As you can tell from her story, there's hope from yeah. coming from down there, now being an employer. She's even looking for employees. You oh, know? Yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And if you're there, you're watching in Kansas, you can go, um, you can talk to her. And also, she has a YouTube channel. Her name is Esiwa Kago, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's also a gospel artist. Uh, she sings very well. If you go to her channel, you see all the music there and yeah yeah so as i conclude um i would want to say this i was fired so many times and uh, in one job in two jobs they fired me and they took off their phone because it was their phone and they even took the sim card and i thank god for all those people who fired me if if there is a way of like encouraging a person through this Sometimes the things you go through in life, they're just for shaping you. But when the things are taking place, you don't know, you have no idea. You just see Satan. You just see, oh, the devil is against me. And I'm not saying it is, it is a bad thing to, to, to re rebuke the devil. But sometimes the things we go through, it is because God is shaping you to make you the person that he would want to see. Like when we were running up and down with Uber, we didn't know that one day, we didn't even, we had hope, of course, shaky hope, that one day we would be seated and not worrying about going out there, making less money than the target, and mm -hmm. then you are like, how am I going to even um, make all these bills to balance, and yeah. they are needed. God removed all that, now it is not something that we fight anymore, yeah. and we are not millionaires yet. But God has oh, put us. Oh, we will be this year. We have to be. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> so we can only thank God, and I'm so much. Thank you, Betty, for having me. And people, uh, just go to my YouTube channel and follow me there or subscribe there. And thank you for the support so far. We thank God. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and share on the comment section. If you've gone through something that uh, that something similar like as a story and uh, if you are self-employed and you're enjoying the journey so far I mean just share something tell us from what you've learned from the story and mm -hmm. if you're in America and you don't know how to start a business and you would want to start a business and you are this um, full of fear and stuff you can talk to me I can I can encourage you and maybe show you two or three things right. that can lead you to your yeah, she's on, an owner. She's also a, on, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, you can inbox her there too. Yes. All right. God bless you. Take bye care. Bye bye, guys. Bye.